Hi, Joel Lightcatcher here, and this is my new Moss Grill. This is my single barrel smoker with firebox and rotisserie, and it's replacing that old rust bucket over there, my old Weber charcoal grill, and you can see it's not in the best of shape. It's all rusted out after about, I don't know, seven, nine years of age. Now, what we're gonna talk about is how to put this together. What tools do you need, and what supplies do you need to keep it looking brand new? It's like yesterday I built this. Oh, wait a minute, we're gonna come back to that in a minute. Now this is an American grill, no metric tools required. We need American 7 16 inch wrench. This is the most important tool you need, open end, closed end, it's all nut and bolt assembly. So let's say you hold that on one end, well you got the bolt. For the bolt you need another 17 inch socket on a driver. Now this is great for the short nuts and bolts, but when you get the longer ones you want a socket wrench. This will get those bigger ones down with less irritation on your wrist. There are some bolts that are like this long, and that is a lot of wrenching down. So, how do you keep it looking new? Well, that's easy. All the supplies you can get at Home Depot. For the hot surfaces, such as the grill, inside and out, we use the Rust-Oleum High Temp Paint. Again, this is the one with the picture of the grill on it. That grill tells you it is made for grills. Don't confuse it, the one with the picture of the engine on it, that's for the cars. This is what you want for the grills. You can spray it outside, you can spray it inside. I do it about, well, anytime I see a bare spot, I just give it a shot, no more rust. Now, for the cart, all the black surfaces are with this Rust-Oleum product. Now, this is what they used to use on their, but recently they changed. They've changed to a different Rust-Oleum paint. This is a gloss black. Fred Moss says, this is the one to buy from Home Depot. This is a paint and primer. It's a Rust-Oleum 2X gloss black. You can use it anywhere that isn't, you know, directly exposed to the flame. Now, I couldn't find this. I went to three Home Depots and they were out. So I did a little search on uh, Google and well, they had this one. Now, sure, it looks different. It's a smaller can, different picture. It's still gloss black, 2X paint and primer. Either of these will do the job. Just keep that paint on whenever you see it getting too dirty or rust is starting to show up and your grill will last a very, very long time. So let's get back to the beginning of a story when we had nothing but boxes that became this. Hi, Joel Lightcatcher here, and today I have a Moss Grill. Doesn't look like much right now, it's still in the box. But when I'm done, this will be a single barrel smoker with rotisserie. And I'm really excited about it. I'm happy though that the shipper broke some of the boxes. And you can see I've got a little damage here. Some scratches I'm gonna have to clean up. So I'm gonna open this up and sort it out and get started. So we're going to start with this box. This is the stand and this is the barrel. And this has been custom made for me. The uh, came from San Diego, California. And I dare say the shipper was not kind to my box. It's not no fault of Moss Grills. I don't know which end is up. Right, it looks like this is a flap, so let's, let's try this. Yeah, this is a flap. No, I've never done this before. This is all brand new. And you might want to know, how did I come to get a moss grill? Well, I'm their webmaster, and I've been working with moss for quite a few years now, and I've seen this company grow. And I kind of felt it's good karma. When you uh, do business with someone, you should buy from them. Well, I got a bag of nuts. Paper here. And let's see. Let's. You know, what? I'm going to lay it down. And I'm going to cut open the box. I think that would be the safest thing to do. Uh, 
Whoa. And the box is disassembling before me, it seems. By the way, I'm doing this in my air-conditioned living room because this is Florida. And it's like 80 degrees out and humid right now. All right. Well, I don't know if that was the right way to do it, but it worked out okay. So this looks like a side. And I ordered it with what we call the fancy pants, the side walls. Uh, and yes, you can see we got damage there. It's pretty well dented. Ugh. You can see right there, the, the shipper was not too kind to this. I'm gonna put this over here. Oh, I have the wheels installed on it. I have a wrapped package, which I'll put over here. Another wrapped package. Yes, some assembly is required. This looks like it is my cooking surface that I will set over here. I have another package here. It says sidewall for enclosure. And I ordered it with a before I do that, here's another wall without a plate. Set that over here. I have a second cooking grate, which I asked for. And I'll explain why I, I'll explain why I have two cooking grates later. Self-apparent to some of you. Uh, I have this. I wonder what this is for. Oh, I assume this is the bottom shelf. And this has been numbered number 12. All right, let's open these up and see what we got here. idea. Let's find out what's in here. I know the barrel is in that big box. Well, this looks like the diamond plate shelf. Be the other shelf, I'm guessing. Yep, that's what it is. This is the other shelf. the other shelf that's going on there. Drop that down. And again we have the oh there's a couple of things in here. We have a side wall. Another plate, which looks like it got a little, got a little dented. Looks like it needs some touch-up spray paint. This is number 28. 
Okay. So, first thing I've learned about Moss Grills is you need some touch-up supplies. Hang on one second, I'll, I just got mine. It says in the instructions that you need high heat paint for touch-ups on the hot surfaces and quick color for touch-ups on the stand. These are both Rust-Oleum products, so I got some. Looks like I'm gonna need it. I also got some sandpaper because I expected, well, I knew about that dent in the sidewall and we'll talk to the shipping company about compensating us for that mess up. Now, Boss Grills has this instructions that uh, they want me to put on the website, but honestly, I'm gonna have to redo this so it's more understandable. It's got some pictures, mentions about the paint. Um, let's see if I can follow this and put this together. Sometimes I do what the instruction says, but not what it means. So let's see how this goes together. Whoa. <laughs> well, off camera, I did some touch up painting and that was about an hour ago. So I'm gonna continue working. And what I've done is I started matching up the, the numbers from the pieces and I got my parts here. Now these are all 7 16 nuts and bolts. So I found uh, a 7 16 wrench and a 7 16 socket. And that's really all the tools I think I need. So I'm gonna start trying to put this together, starting with, I guess, the bottom here, because I found them. So let's see how this goes together. Blind leading the blind. So, let's see, 20 on the bottom, so it looks like, you know, I would think this would go like this, but it looks like it goes with the lip up. Let's go get a nut and bolt and a couple of tools. Let's see if I can do this single-handed. Ah. My hips aren't what they used to be, so I need a little help getting up and down these days. <clears throat> so, there's 20, here's 20. This is gonna be a little bit odd in that I'm gonna angle here till I get started. This would be nice if I had a helper, which I don't. <clears throat> this way. Maybe this will be easier. I think this will be easier. <clears throat> okay. Let's try this. Yeah. This is the way to do it. Um, get in there, get those holes lined up, there we go, that's one, let's see if we can get this just finger tight for now, I don't believe in tightening things down tight until we're moving along, I'm going to keep that loose, I'm going to try and do the bottom now, that's got to be a matching number. Hope I'm right. You know what? I don't know how easy this will be to flip over, but let's give it a shot. Twenty, and it is twenty-five and twenty-five. I get a box formed I'll tighten them up better so I got 31 there and here's the side I painted Let's find the 31 here 21 31 
this is obviously the back side because I got my fancy pants on there. By the way, there's two sides of this bolt. You want the locking side towards the, of the nut towards the bolt. Flip it over for the other side. Try to use my knee. Awkward. Got the bottom part on. <clears throat> Let's look for a 24. There is part 24. So, I'm going to take these off and redo them. Start with 24. Let's do that bolt around the Looks like this goes on the inside. Uh oh. Something off there. Oh, I missed this one. Another one I gotta take off. I gotta loosen or something. Okay, we have a problem. There are bolts here. Okay, I gotta sneak it around that one. Okay. There's a bolt on the side here that you gotta skirt it around. This is the side the smoke box is going on. Okay, it's still loose on purpose. Okay. We're getting a little bit of stability here now. The wheels are locked, so it's not going to roll too well. So let's turn it around. <coughs> it's with heavy steel. Twenty-three and twenty-seven. I'm gonna guess this is twenty-three and twenty-seven. Hmm. No, it's not. Oh, wait. I'm looking for thirty and twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Thirty and twenty-eight. And that would be this. And again, I have. A bolt right there, I gotta sneak it around. Good. Butterfingers. Come on. Come on. Ah, it's not. 
Not seeding. Let's try that again. Find that. There it is. Holes in. I mean, this isn't difficult. It's awkward, but it's not difficult. At this point, I think we can make it tight because we've got our stability in there. So, I'm going to tighten these down. And I'm not going to do it all the way yet. Still, I won't do that till after I get them all the way down. Continue. I had tightened all the other bolts down and then this side so everything is all nice and snug and I did adopt a socket wrench to make things go a little faster so this could help. So now that we got that we got to put the sides on and I'm going to start with this one right here. And again we got some bolts pre-made on 27, 27, 23, 23. So it looks like I have to remove these bolts and then put them back on. So, <clears throat> so I'll do that here. Make use of this barrel, box, box barrel in a box. Make use with this. This might be a little tricky because there's two parts here. I have magnetic part holders to make the job easier. Okay, so this goes on top of this. No, underneath this. On top? No, on top. Yes, on top. I'm trying to remember how it was. Bolt in. And then using ow 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 leg cramp ow leg cramp to use my this is a little awkward definitely awkward gotta somehow support it with one leg on your lap Again, awkward. By the way, my wife is in the kitchen. That's what all that noise is about. She's making chicken. 
Now for the side mounts, this seems pretty simple. Tiff, bend it when you need to. Okay, that sounds good. There's the front shelf. And then we can put the barrels. Probably give a little bit more touch of paint before I put the barrels on, just because it'll be easier. We'll see. Okay, now we got the front shelf. Match up the numbers 22, 26, 22, 26, and yes, we have the bolts in there already. Probably this one doesn't have the the um, support eh, supports the other sides do. Kind of like what the erector set I had as a kid. Well, the base is all set, all ready to go. Firebox goes on that side, grill goes in here. Let's go put this aside and see if we can open that up. 
wheels work really nice. Now, I hope this is okay because, again, the shipper did me an unkindness here. And uh, I don't know what I'm gonna find inside. I hope, I hope it's fine. If not, I'm sure Fred will make it right. Let's see. I'm feeling good that it's fine. I saw the picture of it before they shipped it and it looked really cool. Again, I don't know how I'm supposed to take this out of here. We have a lot of paper, and we have a lot of this plastic stuff. Um, looks like he has a certain amount of wood in here for padding. Let's see if I can just tear apart one side. I think that's going to be the best way to do this. for protection so the barrels made well for I mean the packing for the barrel is really good Some more more wood packing material some more wood packing it to here still. Oh, here's some more wood packing material. No, I don't know what I'm doing. this, which is apparently packing material. I think it says it's eco-friendly on it. Reusable bag. It says. <laughs> well, here's the chimney. Oh, and here's a, a loose nut. Know where this goes to, but I found a loose nut right on top. I'm gonna put it here in my tray. Let's move this out of the way a little bit more. Boy, that just keeps rolling back. And the firebox and the rotisserie is in here somehow. <laughs> I really am not sure what I'm supposed to do at this point. Let's see, uh, I have some instructions here. Let's see what it says. Okay, we did that. Once the frame is assembled, place the 55 gallon drum in the middle of the frame. The barrel is gravity fed into the center of the frame. Blah, 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 blah. Install, unit installed with firebox. Install the smoker box on the side of 55 gallon drum. It must be inside. Remove the smoker box from the barbecue unit. The smoker box has three holes, blah, blah, blah. Figure that out. I think I'm gonna need my wife to do this. <laughs> because I guess I've got to take the smoker barrel part out of this before I put it on. Now I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here's the cap. 
There's the cap for the chimney over here. There's stuff inside. Let's see if I can turn it so you can see. We have stuff inside. There's looks like it's part of the rotisserie. firebox and this looks like the rotisserie motor this, I don't know if I'm supposed to take this out this is the, the warming tray okay again let's take that out Fire boxes in there. How do I get this out? The fire box. Is that it? Yeah. So I'm gonna get this out so I can close the door. Wait for my wife to come so we can set this down. So let's go get this in position. My wife says she'll help me as long as I don't videotape her. So, pause. I'm gonna pause the video until she comes back. Put it on, and you'll see the after. Sorry, <laughs> my wife is camera shy. We're gonna continue this this morning. It's kind of a little late yesterday. Still have to put the firebox on. My wife helped me put this on here. Still gotta center it on the cart. I've got nothing in there right now to make it easier. So let's start with that, and I'm going to. Lock the wheels down to make it a little easier. I just push stepping down the casters there. I think I only need to do two of them for this. And I don't have it quite centered, so let's just pick it up and just kind of just sits there by gravity. And let's just see if it's level. To me, level is when this is in the right position. Because I have to open this. Looks like I gotta turn it just a little bit. <coughs> just a little bit. If I scratch the face, I just do a little touch up. Yeah, it's just sits in there by gravity. <coughs> and I guess one little trick is <coughs> I wanna make sure that these grates are level. Just so I can pull it in and out easier. So I'm gonna give a little tip, take a level, just drag it on there. My glasses. Yeah, perfect. Nice and level right there. So that's where I want it to be. And then make sure also that it is pulled all the way in. And that is all the way. And that's where that has to be. All right, so at this point, let's go put the firebox on. Well, this is our firebox. And I took out the grate, the charcoal grate that's in there. So it's empty right now. And the way we connect this is, on this side, we have three mounting bolts, points, one, two, three, and those connect to these, one, two, three. This came with these already inserted, and we have a bolt that goes inside, and on the other side, once I get it connected, I use a, a lock ring and a lock nut. And that is how we do. By the way, it's a quick tip. Get yourself a magnetic part tray. They're like a couple bucks at home, Harbor Freight Tools. Stick it on the metal part, you won't lose your parts. Before you put the firebox on, be sure you lock the feet. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. So you take your bolt and open the door. Find the top hole, put the bolt in. And then use your finger to hold it in 
while you got it. By the way, you notice the two notches here. That's for the rim. So you can get those notches in there and then get that in. I'm gonna use my hand to hold the bolts at the other side. You only got that. Take a lock ring, put it on, make a nut, and start putting that on. Now this is a really long bolt, so lots of thread down. Once I got on there, the other should be easier. Okay. Again, let me make sure I got that in the notches as such. Now we got that one to inspect this, make sure it's in there right. Yep. All right, let's get the other bolts in now. Long thread down there. You gotta turn the bear a little bit as you get in there. I'm not making these tight yet. I'm just getting them in position. That echo you hear is the barrel. I don't know if you hear it or not. I got the microphone on my chest. <clears throat> okay, now let's get some open the end wrenches. Now I got my socket and wrench. So for this, let's start. Actually, before I begin, let's just make sure that this is wiggled into the right place. I'm going to start at the top because that seems to take the weight. And I have a gap on this side that I'm just closing up between the firebox and the drum. I want to make sure that's nice and tight. I'm not going all the way because I want to inspect and make sure that this is all the way good. Okay, let's do this one next. Again, I'm watching the tightness to the drum as I go along. I'm going to do a final tightness once I get these done. socket for this so I'm getting my socket. For this I'm just using a socket for a final tightening.
make sure it's really good and snug here. I don't want smoke or anything coming out the edge of the firebox. and secure. I'm going to hit with a little touch of pink where the bolts will get pretty hot. All right, the firebox is now on and you can see as you shake it, there's no flex. It's, it's in there solid. And of course, check the damper. That's working really good. No problems there. Okay, firebox is on. And because I'm a little anal about rust, I'm gonna hit it with a little high temp paint on the inside in case I scratched anything up. And that includes the screws too. I'm gonna to do it in the firebox as well. I got a good rust free surface. Yeah, I know I gotta give it a little time to dry, but that's okay. I see a few little scratches here, just a little bit around the frame. There you go. This is the same paint, this is the same paint they use on the whole grill. I mean, the whole burning surface of the grill. So, yeah, that's what uh, Fred Moss and Moss Grills recommends we do. The last thing we want to do is put the charcoal grate in the firebox. Just tilt it a little, get it in there, just put it down so it's level on the bottom. That's it, charcoal go on there, that job is done. Well, it's time to put in our cooking surface, so let's get to that. Open this up. And I don't think there's a front or a back end, so let's just pick one. No, I've never done this before. Let's see how this goes. Put it right in there. And boom. There we go. So we're cooking. Instead of getting in there and going, ah, my hand's on fire. Slide this out. Do your stuff. Push it back in. How about the next surface? This is the upper cooking. Now, here's the trick on this. You gotta put it in on a slight angle like this. And if you don't do it, you'll soon learn why. It has to go in on a little bit of an angle, a little bit of manipulation, maybe a little force, and then it goes right back in there. Wonder what this thing's for right here? That's for my rotisserie. On the other end, there's a hole, and there's the mount. Now, to do the rotisserie, we require removing this and this. So let's get to that next. If you wanna cook with the rotisserie, it's a little tricky in that you can't have to take these surfaces out because with the spit here, there's no room. So again, we gotta take it out just right to get it out. There you go. Set that aside. Take out the grill. Use two, use two hands, it's very heavy. Now we have the, the whole cooking area open. 
Now you may need to adjust this little piece on the end because you've got to get that hole to line up with this. That can take a little fiddling around. It just slides down on there. The spit. This is the spit. And I have just thrown these on here. They just tighten and loosen just like that. This is the end that goes on, the, on that end. And the square end, that goes into the rotisserie. So here's the trick, and I thought this was a wrong at first. Put it in here. Now here's where you gotta finagle it a little. So it goes in there, you gotta twist it until it goes square peg into square. Now you notice, when I was doing this, I was wiggling around here. Notice this is on a slight angle, and I'm told that's intentional. And by the way, you can see without the shelf, if I had like say a big turkey on here, yeah, it's gonna go below the grate and above the shelf. So it's kind of like a one or the other, rotisserie or surface cooking, you can't do both. So anyway, so the idea is why, and this is what Fred said, because you don't want to get your hands burnt. You've got hard charcoal there. So you want to have gloves that come up here, and then you can take it quickly, quickly out without burning yourself. That's the trick. And that's, that's the rotisserie. And there's one last thing, the cap. Now my grill is fully assembled. So let's get ready to grill. Take off the cap, open up the damper, the fold. Now I got my charcoal in here already set. So let's get some lighter fluid on this puppy. I'm gonna put a lot on here because I really need to get it lit up. But what we're doing is we're not actually cooking any food yet. We're purifying the grill and we're gonna give it at least 30 minutes to an hour, I guess. And what we really want is, what we really want is for all the manufacturing oils and grease to get burned off. And that's the purpose of this. So let's get our grate in because I'm gonna have to do this for both of my grates eventually. But for right now, we need to get this grate in here. Because again, we have manufacturing grease and oil from the factory, from Moss Grill that needs to get burned off. One more thing. Because this grill is new and I just moved it, I'm going to use my level just to check things out and make sure I got this level. Helps if you put the right end out. And it looks like it's a little high. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit so that bubble is level. It might be a little tough because this is heavy. A little more. Oh, too much. Too much. Ah. Now that's perfectly level. The moment of truth. Let's light her up. First the firebox. And the grill. We have fire. Again, we are purifying this. We want to burn off all of the um, manufacturing oils. Let's get these things away from it. And there's probably quite a bit of it. Solvents from the paint and other things. I'm gonna close this lid. But I want it to get nice and hot. And it is burning there. And you can see the smoke. Can you see the smoke coming off of this? I'm not gonna close this one yet. I want it to get really good. The, we, the reason I'm closing the firebox is because we have the, the damper all the way open and the inside open, so I know it's getting airflow. And I'm sure if I open this, we're gonna see flames. Yep, we still see flames, and wow, that charcoal's already getting there. That's very nice. We want this to get nice and hot. 
We're just gonna let those charcoals really burn down. I want the flame to go out like any charcoal fire. Got to burn off the solvents of the uh, lighter fluid. So I'm going to go and change this over to a time lapse so you can watch the whole thing go for the next hour. All right, we finished our burn-in. I tapped the tube. I closed the dampers. The coals are still hot, but I'm trying to burn out all the oxygen and kill the flame. And when that's done, I'm gonna take out all the charcoal, wipe it all down, coat the surfaces with uh, Pam or olive oil, and then I can cook food. So right now, we are at 350 degrees so this might take an hour or two or three to cool down and burn out so uh, we'll come back when this is all done 